Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. With the Sim Update 15, the enhanced version of the default Airbus A320 Neo is available by any builds and it is a great plane. I have been doing many flights with this plane for the past one week and so far all the flights have been really good. And in this regard, I've been making lots of videos so that I can just break down all the information related to this plane into different videos. So that it's easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to tell you how to start the plane from the cold and dark state. And um, when I make my videos, I always keep this thing in mind that the beginners will be watching it. Therefore, I will be just uh, touching the basics and uh, I will just keep this in mind that the people who are watching it, they have little or no knowledge of this plane and flight simulation. So that's why I will be just going through the basic things. And uh, one more thing, uh, for this plane, you have to configure the electronic flight bag and the MCDU uh, for the flight. I've made a detailed video for that, uh, which includes flight planning, how to configure the EFB and the MCDU. So if you're not really familiar with that process, I would just recommend you to go and watch that video because uh, you will learn many things in detail. And then you can just come back over here in this video because I will be configuring the EFB and the MCDU, but I will not go into the details. Before I proceed further, I would just like to familiarize you uh, with different parts of the cockpit. Now over here, you will see uh, this is the overhead panel. And this overhead panel has got controls for the lights. It's got controls for the hydraulic systems, for the electrical systems, uh, for the fuel and air conditioning and uh, navigation which is over here so it has got many controls over here so i will just take you uh, through these controls in this video if you look over here you will see the fcu this is the flight control unit you can set the speed the heading and uh, plus the altitude of the plane uh, the vertical speed as well and uh, then you can activate the autopilot and auto thrust from here then on the left hand side and on the right hand side you can see this is EFIS, which is Electronic Flight Instrument System. You can interact with the navigation displays. Uh, they're both here on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now, this is the primary flight display. This is the navigation display. Similarly, this is the primary flight display for co-pilot and navigation display for the co-pilot. Then you have ECAN, which is Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitor. Uh, this is the upper ECAM and this is the lower ECAM. Over here on this ECAM, you will get lots of information. Let me just show you. You will get information related to engine and then the bleed. I'll just explain it to you in this video. The pressure, electric systems, hydraulic systems, fuel, APU, air conditioning, doors, and so on and so forth. So now this is the pedestal. And this pedestal has got many things on it. It's got the MCDU, which is the multifunction control and display unit. It actually interacts with the flight management guidance system. Then you have uh, communication controls, some controls for the light. Then you have uh, the weather radar. Then you have the transponder. And uh, then you have flaps over here, speed brakes, uh, the thrust levers. And this is the control for the trim, whether to you know trim up or down during the flight or for the takeoff or for the landing. This is the brake and uh, plus this is the control for the rudder, whether you turn left or right. So this is automatically just by autopilot, you don't really have to worry about it. And this button is for the cockpit door, whether you want to lock it or unlock it. So this is uh, the introduction of the cockpit. So now uh, what I'm going to do is this, I'm just going into uh, the pre-flight procedures or pre-flight flow and that is to have the flight plan. So once I have the flight plan, then I will just come over here and tell you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state. For flight planning, I'm using SimBrief. And as I've told you before, um, there is a very detailed video on my channel uh, for the flight planning for this plane, um, how to configure the EFB and uh, the MCDU. So over here, I'm just going to make a flight plan and uh, then I will just go to the plane and start the plane from the cold and dark stage. So the departure is the way. And the arrival is Hamad International Airport in Qatar. Uh, I've, uh, the aircraft type, Airbus A320neo. And the airframe will be Enables Airbus A320neo. Cost index is 30. This number actually determines the fuel burning rate. The smaller the number, less fuel is burned. The range increases. And uh, the higher the number, more fuel is burned and plane goes at a higher speed. So you can just adjust this number. Then you can change the units from kilograms to pounds and pounds to kilograms. And uh, this is 
the flight time, one hour and 15 minutes. Then your runway for the departure, I will be using 30 right and uh, 34 right for the landing. Altitude will be 28,000 feet. For this flight, I will be carrying full passengers and then freight is auto and payload is auto. Now you have the flight plan and uh, you can change this flight plan. As you can see, if I'm clicking different options, the star is changing. So I will be using this flight plan. This has got four parts. Uh, the standard instrument departure, which is the procedure for the departure. It has the constraints for the altitude and speeds for the departure and plus the route. And then this is the star, which is for the arrival, standard terminal arrival. And it also has the speed constraints and altitude constraints for the arrival. And uh, in between, you have the airways and the waypoints. Anything coming in alphabetical value is a waypoint. And uh, in alphanumeric is an airway. So that's it. So what I'm going to do is this. Now I'm going to generate this flight plan. And uh, you can only import the flight plan in the electronic flight bag if you generate the flight plan. Now you can import it. Now coming back in the plane, let's uh, start the plane from the cold and dark state. But before this, just make sure that the gear lever is down and uh, the thrust is in the idle position. And uh, the speed brake is also retracted and disarmed. And the flaps are also retracted. Parking brake is in place. And uh, the wipers are also off. That's it. So these are the few things that you have to just make sure that they are in the correct pos position. And plus on your controls, if you're using any controller, let's say if I'm using, no, not if, <laughs> I am actually using the TCA quadrant uh, from Thrustmaster for Airbus. And I also ensure that everything is in off position on the controller. Now just uh, ensure this thing and then uh, let's uh, make sure first, yes, this is one thing that you have to make sure that go to the electronic flight bag and the ground services make sure that the GPU is connected and you toggle the chocks. You just remove the chocks because the parking brake is in place. You don't need the chocks. GPU is this van which is connected to the plane and it provides a power supply because engines are off and there is no power supply for the plane. So till the time the plane is um, in the parking, uh, and it will get power from the GPU. Now it's time to turn on the batteries. So let's go over here on the overhead panel and uh, you will see these two buttons, battery one and two. Uh, and make sure that the voltage is more than 25. So right now you're getting some good voltage. But obviously you cannot run the plane on batteries for a long time. So you need some other power source. So you have to actually get the power from the GPU. Now, if you look at the overhead panel, you will see this uh, button external power and it says available because the GPU is connected. So if you press this button, you will have the power. Now you can see the screens are getting up. You can hear the air conditioning is also up and uh, now the plane has got full power. All the systems will be up and running soon. Now the screens are up. Um, the navigation display, the private flight display, and the ECAMs. Now you can see there's nothing coming over here on the private flight display and the, the navigation display because we have to turn on the iris alignment. So if you go over here on the overhead panel, you will see these. Uh, let me just make this view good so that it's easy for you to read. You can see these are three knobs, I, I, IR1, 2, and 3. So you turn them on, 1, two and three. That's it. Now you will see that uh, you have some display on the private flight display and the navigation display because I have set the iris alignment to instant. So if I go over here on in the, in the electronic flight bag and if I go to the options, now you just heard these clicks be because this is the sound of the flight warning system coming into action. So whenever the flight warning system comes up, you hear these click sounds. Okay. Now, if you uh, just look at the screen, you will see IRS align time, real, fast, and instant. If you set it to real, it will take seven to eight minutes for the IRS alignment to complete. Fast, it will take like roughly three to four minutes, and instant, it's done instantly. Likewise, I have set it for this video. So now the IRS alignment is complete, and uh, IRS actually stands for 
inertial reference system and over here you will see ADIRS which is air data inertial reference system. This is actually a system which provides GPS coordinates to the plane so uh, your flight management guidance system knows where it is <laughs> and uh, then it gets easy for it to follow the flight plan. Now uh, what else? So everything is done now. Now let's uh, go to the electronic flight bag and uh, get all the flight information and then we can program the MCDU accordingly. So now this is the weather. Uh, you can see uh, it's coming over here. This is uh, the airport for the de departure and for the arrival. And then you have the time, the wind direction and speed. And uh, then you have uh, the clouds, the temperature and the atmospheric pressure. The plane actually measures its altitude based on the atmospheric pressure. So you really have to adjust the atmospheric pressure in the plane uh, to correct the altimeter, which is over here. So right now you can see uh, it's coming in uh, QNH and, uh, and this is 1013 and uh, the actual atmospheric pressure 1002 so you have to adjust it over there. Then uh, you can also search um, by entering the ECAO code for any airport let's say if I set this airport for Abu Dhabi then I can get it for the Abu Dhabi airport as well. Now this is the operational flight plan. Uh, I have already discussed this operational flight plan um, in the video in which I've told you how to configure the EFB and the MCDU in detail. But however, I will, I will be just going through it in this video. Then you have the ground services and um, you can now uh, toggle the jetway, toggle the catering and luggage. So if you go out, you will see all the ground services will start, the cargo doors will open and all the ground services will not start. And uh, that's it. So you can get all the ground services from the electronic flight bag. Then uh, this is the main thing, uh, the payload. So just get the payload from the sim brief. You will get the fuel and uh, the weight calculations from there. And now you can see preparing aircraft. If you want to do right now, you can click instant, fast up to five minutes or realistic up to 40 minutes. So I'll do instant and you will see the plane jumping because now it's got fuel and, and the weight. Now this is the zero fuel weight of the plane, the weight of the plane with the passengers and uh, the cargo and uh, without the fuel. And this is the block fuel, 4.9 tons uh, or 4,862 kilograms. Now this is the gross weight of the plane, 65,202. The dry weight without anything and plus the maximum weight is 79,468 kilograms. Then you have the zero fuel weight, which is again coming over here and the fuel weight, it's coming over here. That's it. Now you have, um, I will skip this because uh, it has nothing to do, do with this video. But right now, if you just want to start the plane, you can just click this option ready to take off and everything will be up and running. Now for the takeoff, uh, you have to do some calculations over here. Uh, for the runway, I am using uh, 30 right. If I am not wrong, let's uh, look at the operational flight plan. 30 right, exactly. And I can sync, it will get the weather information. And uh, this is the length of the runway. Total runway available, the heading, and uh, plus the surface and the wind. Outside temperature and altimeter, it's coming as 1002, but over here it was coming. Oh, now it's changed. It was 1003, if I'm not wrong. Maybe 1002. I just, it just, I just forgot. Anyhow, I just cross check. And then uh, you have the weight. So the weight is 65 tons, 65,202. So 65.2. Sorry, I just pressed the space bar. So 65.2. Calculate and uh, send to FMGS, which is the Flight Management Guidance System. It gives you the flex to temp, the V1, VR, and V2, and uh, the, your gross weight, and plus uh, your trim settings. Now, uh, flex to temp, I've also covered that um, topic in, the top, um, in, in that video in detail, but it is actually an assumed temperature, and uh, your Flight Management Guidance System thinks it's very hot outside, so during the takeoff, it just tries to give less um, uh, thrust to the engines so that you know there is uh, some good life left in the engines and they can go for a long time because no need to 
uh, just take off at a full thrust because uh, you have a good longer runway and uh, you can take some time to take off. So that's it. And I will just uh, try to save time and I will just quickly program the MCDU. Now let's uh, get rid of this error. Uh, the sequence that you have to follow in order to program the MCDU is diff strip. You have to first of all check the data, initialization, flight plan, secondary flight plan, ra radio and navigation, and then initialization B and performance. So then let's go to initialization and uh, let's request the initialization. You will get the departure arrival airport and then you can enter the flight number. I use my initials, AA123, you can use any flight number. Cost index is 30. Uh, just uh, check this, IRS alignment is done. You can see all the GPS coordinates are coming for IRS 1, 2 and 3 because you know it's in on position. And then you can get the wind information for the takeoff and for the landing. That's it. Now initialization is done. Now let's go to the flight plan, OMDB, departure, and I will be using ILS 30 right. Yeah, it's coming here. Not ILS 30 right for the takeoff. <laughs> it's for the landing. Anyhow, excuse me for that. And uh, this is uh, the SID for the departure. I can insert it. And for the arrival, 34 right. And uh, those now one are via legma insert and that's it now the flight plan is there then you have uh, secondary flight plan you can copy the active flight plan you can change it and uh, if you want to just come back and land again so you can change the destination from any point let's say after db570 you want to come back you can just like click over here change the destination and change the runway for the landing from um, Qatar to Dubai and you can land. Again, uh, I've told you before, I've covered it in detail in that video, which is already there on my channel. Now for the video navigation, you have the frequencies coming in for the VOR. You said the VOR frequency because in case if the GPS system of the plane is not working, then you go back to the conventional method of navigation, which is VOR. It is very high frequency omnidirectional radio. Plane actually follows uh, the radio signals of that uh, VOR and uh, it uh, just navigates its way. So that's why you have the VOR frequency in case the GPS is not working. And then you have the ILS frequency for the approach for Qatar. You can just set it over here. Then uh, after radio, let's go to initialization B. As you can see, uh, it's got another page, so let's go to this page and just click this button. It will pick up the zero fuel weight, the zero fuel weight, center of gravity, and the block fuel, 4.9 tons. And uh, yeah, you can see it over here. Okay, that's it. And now for the performance. So as I've already pressed this option, uh, send to FMGS, so that's why it's here. And uh, you can see the V1, VR, and V2 is coming. V1 is the speed uh, before which you can just decide to abort the takeoff. But after the speed, you have to take off. And uh, your takeoff speed is 148, which is the rotate speed. And then you have to reach the speed 150 in order to, um, to fly the plane in case uh, one engine fails. And then you have the transition altitude at which you change the barometric pressure from the given one to the standard. Flex to temp is coming. And now you have to just enter the flaps and uh, the trim setting. So if I just go over here, you will see the flaps are set to one for this uh, takeoff and uh, the THS is coming as 0.8 up. So one slash 0 0.8 up. And then you have uh, speeds coming in for, for flaps, 149 slats, uh, you have retract so um, after the takeoff at this speed, you start retracting the flaps. Flaps are actually at the front, at, at the back of the wing and slats are at the front. So flaps and slats actually provide a lift to the plane, but they also provide drag. So you just uh, try to take off with an optimum flaps and slats setting. 
so that you know the plane gets uh, the required lift but still uh, there is no drag or little drag and then after the takeoff you just uh, start retracting the flaps and the slats so after 149 you can retract the flaps then after 192 you can retract the slats and this is zero where o which means the uh, uh, the green dot speed this is the speed at which you can fly without any slats and flaps so now the mcdu is programmed and we can just now continue uh, with the pre-flight procedures so that's it so now let's uh, turn on the nav and the logo lights and uh, then uh, you can uh, set the strobe to auto now let me show you what are the nav lights the nav lights are on the wing if you see over here uh, you will see this green light so if any plane especially in the night is looking at the green light it knows the plane's nose is towards the right side if any other plane <laughs> not the people sitting inside the plane <laughs> this is a good one okay and um, if uh, some other plane sees uh, the red light it will know that this plane is going towards its left side i think you get this view yeah now you can see this red light is coming and if any plane sees the white light it means it's looking at this plane from the back side so that's why these uh, nav lights come handy and then this is the logo light so now you turn on these lights and uh, strobe is actually a white bright light that blinks throughout the flight it turns on as soon as the plane uh, just um, gets off from the runway and it turns off as soon as the plane lands that's why you can set it to even auto or you can set it on so it's got two positions i can set it to auto it will be turning on automatically now as uh, i will be um, starting the plane in some time so that's why i will turn on the beacon as well so this is a switch for the beacon it's actually a red light at the top and the bottom of the plane which tells the ground staff to clear the area because now i'm going to start the engines so you will see this red light over here at the top and uh, plus there will be another light at the bottom blinking can we see it yeah this is the one okay so now the beacon is on and with this uh, i can turn on the seat belt signs over here and then the no smoking signs and the emergency exit signs just set them to arm uh seat belt signs you turn them on once the fueling is done as uh, i've uh, completed the fueling so that's why i have turned on this seat belt signs that's it now uh, just go over here on the overhead panel let me just adjust the view and you see uh, over here this control crew supply this is the oxygen supply and just turn it on and uh, the flight recorder ground control just turn it on and uh, that's it now it's time to turn on the fuel pumps you have uh, the controls for the fuel pumps for the left center and right just turn on the fuel pumps and that's it now you can see uh, uh, these are the controls for the air conditioning uh, you can adjust the air conditioning of the plane and uh, now this is pack 1 and pack 2 this is actually for the air conditioning so it's saying fault because the air conditioning is already on but if you click it it's off now okay so the packs are on so i will uh, leave the air conditioning on throughout this flight that's it and um, anything else no that's it now this is uh, the control for the apu and the apu actually stands for auxiliary power unit so now what's going to happen is this i'm not going to start the engines right now i'm just going to switch from the ground power unit to the auxiliary power unit it's actually a generator at the back of the plane uh, which provides uh, power until the time engines are up because right now uh, i will be starting the pushback and i need some power so for this purpose i will be switching the apu so let's uh, turn on the apu master switch and then just wait for 3 4 seconds and then you can press this button start that's it so now over here on the lower e cam you will automatically see the apu information coming agt is the exhaust gas temperature this is the end percentage and plus the apu generator the percentage and the voltage is coming and plus um, this is the bleed APU also generates uh, compressed air which helps the engines to start so that's why you also have to turn on the APU bleed once the APU is available that's it so let's uh, wait for the APU to get available and then i will carry forward now the APU says available and you have the APU 
and if you look over here you will also see available coming with this you can turn on the apu bleed as i've told you before this is a compressed air which will be required to start the engine if you don't turn on the apu bleed the engines will not start and with this uh, just turn on the probe slash window heat uh, because uh, at higher altitudes it's very cold and you must uh, you you might uh, face the issue of uh, fogging on your sheets so that uh, on your windshield so that's why you need the window heats now um, the plane has the apu and i can disconnect the external power and you will see that the plane will still have the power with this what i can do is this i can go to the ground services and i can toggle the gpu now you will see the gpu will be disconnected and that's it now all the ground services are complete and um, I can disconnect the jetway by pressing this button toggle jetway and automatically this door one lift will close that's it and this is also appearing over here in the lower ecam as you can see all the doors are closed now so as i told you before you can just uh, go through these options in the lower ecam and see what's actually happening so apu is there now you can see the air conditioning oh it's cold <laughs> and then you have the doors and uh, the wheels you can see uh, the the temperature of the brakes over here then you have flight control systems right now it's coming in uh, orange color because uh, the hydraulic systems are not available so once you start the engine you will have the hydraulic systems running and then you can just carry out the flight controls because right now if i do anything if i move uh, the rudder or the controller nothing will happen because there is no power there is no hydraulic system that's it and uh, one more thing just adjust the altimeter uh, this is 1002 over here or maybe i can do it after the the, the pushback now it's time to call for the pushback i can release the parking brakes i have uh, you can click it uh, it's not working because <laughs> I'm using the TCA quadrant for th by Thrustmaster, so that's why I have to do it over here. But you can just click it, and the parking brakes will be released. That's it. Uh, another thing uh, before the pushback, I would just like to tell you one thing. There is this one uh, very interesting thing about uh, the Airbus cockpit. If you look at the overhead panel, all the buttons are black, so it means everything is good. But if anything is white or appearing in this um, amber color then i think you should pay attention to it now generator one is coming as fault and uh, generator two is coming as fault and as soon as uh, we have uh, the engines running this will also disappear uh, and then uh, you're only yeah, during the flight only the probe heat uh, switch will be on it will say on and the ground control let's say on and then another thing, you have uh, the anti-ice option for the wing and uh, for the engine. As I'm not uh, flying in the icing condition, that's why I don't need wing and uh, engine's anti-ice. Otherwise, you can just turn it on. So uh, in the flight, if you have turned on the anti-ice, then these three buttons, they will be on. Probe will be on. And the rest of the buttons should be black. Okay. Now what I can do is this. I can call for the pushback. I can just go over here and uh, ground and uh, I can just click this button aft and now you can see the tug is moving one more thing um, on the upper ecam you will see many memos and plus the alerts so just keep an eye on this uh, memo constantly and uh, you will get a very good uh, awareness of the situation what's really going on now the pushback has started and um, if you look at this navigation display, so this is the point from where I will be taking off. So I have to, you know, while taxing, I have to go this way towards left. So I will be turning the plane towards the, its right side. So this is how you know uh, whether to turn left or right. By the way, uh, you can just uh, get this table. <laughs> it's a good feature. And plus you can also, oh, you have these uh, footrests for the captain and for the co-pilot because you know, these are the rudder paddles so 
during the flight you don't need to you know put your f- foot over here otherwise autopilot will be disconnected so that's why in real life the pilots actually get these foot rest and they put their foot over here in order to make sure they don't press the rudder because it will automatically disengage the autopilot during the flight now just uh, look for this uh, yellow line which is the taxiway line i'm never good at uh, the pushbacks so kindly excuse me for that now let's uh, turn right i think it was a good time to say right maybe yes let's see how good this pushback is and uh, now i can just uh, uh i'm off anyhow <laughs> it's okay i can just uh, stop the pushback and i can engage the parking brakes now it's time to start the engines and now you have um, the the mode control uh, for the engine you can see it has got a position ignition start so just move it over here and now you can start the engines so you can start the engine by uh, starting the second engine or the right engine engine 2 yes now it's there so once you uh, press this uh, button you will see engine 2 running so when this uh, n2 percent is i think um, at 30% i was using a checklist it said 20% but uh, when once i did, did it uh, i i think it's at 30% you will see this n1 percent moving so right now you can see the engine is not moving so fast very slow but now once it's uh, at 30% now you can see that the speed increases so now you have the engine running um you can also start the engine one right now which is the left engine then now it will also be running now for some time you will see this engine will be running once you have n1 increasing and uh, plus you also have the fuel flow coming right now 320 kg per hour but it will go very high uh, during the flight yeah now it's moving and uh, plus after 30 you will also see the fuel flow coming yeah now the fuel have started to flow towards the engine and uh, now you can see uh, l- let's look at the hydraulic systems now you can see the hydraulic systems are up and uh, the pressure is coming psi and this will also go up to 3000 so green blue and yellow all up to 3000 now uh, the flight controls will be working uh, so if i now do the flight control test if i move this side stick all the way forward you will see the elevator is moving over here on the lower ecam and if i just pull it back you will see moving and towards the left you can see the ailerons also working and plus the rudder now for the pitch trim for the takeoff it's coming as 0.0 degrees up you have to set it to 0.8 up so just move this and you will see the pitch trim is now set to 0.8 up let's confirm what was it 0.8 up now um, actually you have uh, set uh, the elevator trim to 0.8 up so it will help you during the takeoff slightly elevators are set to Uh, lift the plane up so you will get also additional lift because the weight of the plane is more towards the f- the front and if uh, more weight is towards the back so you know it just pitches down during the takeoff that's it now you have done all the flight control tests you can just uh, bring the fuel over here or and one more thing just turn on this weather and pre- predictive wind shear on so that you can see the weather 
over here on the navigation display. I've uh, made a video on my channel in which I've shown you how to see the weather. Although right now uh, there are no clouds, so that's why you will not see anything over here. But if you have got clouds, you will see something over here. <laughs> now if you go here, uh, this is uh, the transponder. Just set it to auto and uh, this is uh, the control for the traffic avoidance. So just uh, move it to TA slash RA and that's it. So if you look at over here in the upper ECAM, you can see uh, the memo coming over here, take off, it says auto brake max. So this is the control for the auto brake. You set it to max because in case you want to reject the takeoff, then these brakes will come into action. That's why you go with the max. Cabin check, uh, you cannot do this, <laughs> but anyhow, it's coming, cabin check. Spoilers armed. Now, these are the spoilers. Uh, spoilers are actually armed uh, during the takeoff. What are spoilers? I will just tell you. On the, on the wings of the plane, there are these flaps which actually get up and they provide drag. So these are also the speed brakes uh, during the flight. If you want to reduce the speed of the plane in the air, you get these uh, speed brakes so that, you know, the plane slows down. So uh, during the landing and uh, during the takeoff, you arm the sp um, these uh, spoilers so that if you uh, decide to abort the takeoff, during the takeoff, then these spoilers get activated. And in the landing, once you get the reverse thrust, these spoilers are also active. Now the flaps are set to takeoff. So setting one and just look at the ECAM, you will have your flaps and slats. So these are the slats. You can see they're coming out and the flaps are at the back. So now you have slats and flaps for the takeoff. You can just press this button, takeoff config, and you will see normal. So everything is good for the takeoff. And right now, parking brake is in place. APU bleed is on and ignition. So what you have to do is this. You have to turn off the APU bleed because now you have got power coming in from the engines. You don't need APU. You can turn it off and then you can also turn off the master APU. Switch off. That's it. Now adjust the altimeter uh, for the takeoff. Uh, 1002. So let's uh, set 1002 over here. And uh, let's set 1002 over here also. And over here also. That's it. And now your altimeter is adjusted and it's showing you the right altitude as per the barometric pressure outside. That's it. Now it's time to turn on uh, the lights, wing lights, and uh, nose light to taxi. And then you have runway turn off lights. So you have uh, lights on the wings, and uh, this is your light for the nose wheel. Uh, let me just change the time. Okay, so you have the runway turn, turn lights. As you can see, you have the light on the left hand side, on the right hand side, so the pilots can see left and right, and then on the front. And then you have got uh, these uh, wing lights, which uh, makes engines and the wings visible in the flight during the takeoff and especially during the landing. So why do you turn on these lights after the pushback? Because, you know, these lights are really bright and especially it will be very harmful for the eyes of the people at the crown. So that's why you turn them on. So I've covered the strobe, the beacon, the wing light, nav and logo light and nose light. And then you have um, the landing lights used for the landing, but you can also use them for the taxi uh, and for the takeoff. Uh, and plus uh, you can also set the nose to takeoff once you are at the runway. Now, um, I was talking to one of the pilots and um, uh, it's got he's got an experience of almost like 30, 40 years uh, of flying. And he was telling me, uh, when I asked about these lights, he said that in their airline, there was a procedure to turn on all the lights. Um, because, you know, um, it gets confusing whether to turn on the lights in the morning or in the night, which lights to use, which one not to use. Maybe you forget to you turn on some lights, so they turn on all the lights. Because they say that in the morning, these lights actually make the planes visible from a distance. Because from a distance, your plane is like a small dot. But if you've got so many bright lights, you can the other planes can see your plane from the distance. So just to increase the visibility, they turn on all the lights. And um, plus, I've got also one video on my channel in which I am taking off from Riyadh um, uh, Airport, the King Khalid International Airport. 
and there's this fly nas a bus a320 neo and as soon as it's, uh, this plane is on the runway it also turns on uh, the nose to take off and then the landing light so it gets very bright okay you get the maximum lights no harm to turn them on but right now for the taxi you can keep it a taxi and once you are in the runway and you can just set it uh, to take off and you can also turn on the landing lights we just keep them in the on position uh, not uh, sorry uh, don't put them in the re retract position just keep them in the middle and then you can turn them on that's it so now you can see everything is now black great and as i told you before if anti ice was on you will see these two uh, three blue lights and one for the heat probe heat uh, window heat <laughs> probe and slash window heat it's been a long time since i'm recording this video anyhow and uh, today i also recorded one more video so uh, it's been a long day for me so you can uh, see uh, the memo has changed over here you can see the parking brake is on landing lights are on ignition is on and uh, you can turn off the ignition one thing i forgot to do just put it to normal otherwise you will see ignition over here and then you have the anti ice on and everything is good to go so i hope this was a useful video for you if you've got any questions you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video the comment section is there for you thank you very much for staying with me have a nice day hope to see you soon